Um, my name is Julia Nagy. Um, these are my teammates, Ian Riker, um, Jessica Belt, Stephanie Aber, and Lorena Kowalski, who's in class right now. Our faculty members are John Leacox and Brooke Belina, um, and we partnered with the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, we weren't aware that, that our video was going to play right before, so some of it might seem a little repetitive, but we'll go through it, everything. Um, so this is our team. So our project focuses on assessing the water needs of the Dolce Palma watershed within the Bolivar province of Ecuador. Over 40,000 people within this watershed rely heavily on agriculture for income and subsistence. The construction of a hydroelectric dam at the base of this agriculturally productive region is threatening multiple communities' access to water for irrigation. The government granted a hydroelectric company a concession for up to 90% of the water rights in the entire region. Initially, the concession lasted for 50 years, but is now valid for the duration of the useful life of the project, which could be longer. Um, this means that farmers will not be able to utilize the water for irrigating their own crops. Um, the concession is in violation of the 2008 Ecuadorian Constitution, which prioritizes the use of water for food sovereignty over industrial uses. Um, so our project aims to quantify the amount of water available for crops in the watershed in order to determine if the social and economic impacts of the dam, and we want to provide farmers with the information they need to apply for new irrigation water concessions in the future. Ultimately, we want to determine if the remaining 10% left to the region's farmers is enough for them to survive on, especially during the summer dry season when the water availability is lowest and demand for irrigation is high. So, the FAA priorities of info equity, info transfer, info literacy, and collaboration help to guide the execution of our project. We are providing access to data about crop water need and water availability. Availability can vary both seasonally or in the long term due to climate change. Previously, farmers had no way of knowing this information because it requires expensive equipment and intricate crop models that they did not have access to. By providing our information to farmers through a user-friendly website, we are reducing the digital divide and allowing the knowledge to be openly accessed. We hope that our tool will provide farmers with a better understanding of water availability in the region and its variability over time. Our cross-disciplinary and cross-cultural collaboration has made our research more effective and enabled us to enhance the positive outcomes for the community members of the Dolce Bomba. All right, so in the winter, we travel to Ecuador to install four internet-enabled weather stations and gather community support and understanding for our project. We collected GPS points which used to crop, or map the crop distribution of the watershed. We worked closely with Rachel Conrad, a Fulbright Scholar, the Ecuadorian NGO Acción Ecológica, as well as community members and their leaders. Uh, these weather stations allow us to collect climatic data which we need to compute crop models. These models allow us to estimate the crop water needs of the watershed specific to crop type. Our website will simplify and disseminate this information so that farmers can irrigate wisely. We hope that with a better understanding of their water needs, communities will be able to collectively apply for their water concessions. We held a series of five meetings throughout our time in the watershed where we explained our project and got feedback from community members. It was important that we interact with the community so we could uh, establish a trusting relationship and explain how it worked to benefit them. Okay. So I'm going to explain all of our outcomes. Um, through crop mapping, we aim to estimate the total acreage of each major crop in the watershed using GPS points along with aerial imagery. Um, the first map shows all of the different crops, GPS points in yellow, and points for the current legal irrigation concessions in blue. And the second map is an example of a land use map that can be used to sum the acreage of different crop types individually. Um, the total acreage can be used to scale up the crop water use data in order to estimate the total acreage and the total water needed for irrigation in all of the watershed. We can ultimately compare this with the amount of water available and the amount of water allocated to the dam to determine how much the dam's water concession impacts farming. Okay, our website, as um, shown on the slide, will provide farmers with cumulative weekly crop water use and precipitation data. We chose a weekly interval for reporting our data because most farmers explain that they don't use the internet daily. 
and the website will also provide information about the hydroelectric project, about our background as a technical team, about um, their rights to water, and about how they can apply for water concessions. All right, while in Ecuador, we acquired baseline information on crop pricing and the types of crops that are typically irrigated in the region. And through meetings with the community members, we also acquired demographic and crop data that has helped us develop thorough institutional review board approved surveys that are currently being distributed throughout the watershed. Um, the in-depth questions included on the surveys provide us with credible socioeconomic data. And this data will be useful in the future for um, determining farmers' income and in cost-benefit analyses of the hydroelectric project. A conflict this multifaceted does not have any single solution. This issue has roots in economics, policy, sociology, technology, and agriculture. Bringing together our different areas of study has helped us tackle this issue from many different angles. We've had the opportunity to learn from each other as well as apply our individual skills to a real-world case study. So surveys are continuing to be distributed and analyzed. We are also choosing a domain name and hosting services so that our website can go online. These results will be included in a detailed interim report where we show our outcomes and methodology thus far. Um, we hope to provide objective technological information and set a methodological standard for environmental impact studies for similar projects. The hydroelectric company released a poorly conducted environmental impact statement. It crudely estimated stream flow rate and failed to consider environmental damage downstream as well as social repercussions from this project. The company also failed to get approval from community members before beginning the construction of this project. We hope that our project will provide information that has inaccurately been obtained or overlooked by the company. A project like ours can be a model for generating data that is needed for the just apportionment and efficient use of water anywhere that there is competition for scarce water resources. Getting to know the farmers and the communities that we visit in Ecuador has made this project even more meaningful to us. So we hope that our project has a lasting impact on communities in the future by pro pro providing them with information necessary to ensure their access to such a life-giving resource. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. and Brooke Bolana, please join us, our faculty mentors. Questions? Uh, all right, my job. Um, one of the things that really struck me in, when we talked about your project uh, maybe a month or so ago was that this is an area where people are still using beasts of burden, right? These are what oxen and so forth to plow their fields, and you've equipped them with um, these uh, devices that you know send information up by cell phone to a server at is it Washington State and down the web. So I'm kind of just would like to hear a little more about how you were received and what it took for the local community to trust that the information you were getting was meaningful to them in some way. Well, that was difficult. Um, this conflict has been going on for about 10 years in the area. So they've had other people come in, say they're going to try and help, and then not accomplish anything. So uh, we worked with Rachel Conrad, who's a Fulbright scholar. She's been studying down there for about a year. And so because she had connections with the community, it was a lot easier for us to also gain their trust. But I think we'll have their trust once they see that we are actually on their side, and once we get this website up and they start using it. Other questions, thoughts, observations? Yes, could you um, just tell us um, what your year or level of study is and your discipline? Okay. Um, I'm Julian Nagy. I'm a senior. I'm graduating. Um, and I'm from uh, Environmental Science and Policy. Uh, my name is Ian Reichard. I'm a Communications major with minors in Sustainability and Computer Science. I'm Jessica Belt. I'm in the Civil Engineering Department in the Environmental and Water Resources track, and I'm minoring in International Engineering and Spanish. 
Hi, I'm Stephanie Engber. I am a senior and environmental economics major in the Agriculture and Natural Resources College. Uh, I'm Brooke Palaina. Uh, I'm a research assistant in the Department of Plant Science and also a graduate student. And I'm John Meekart, I'm a professor in the plant Department of Plant Science and Landscape Architecture. And John, you had one more student who was at the end of the video who was not Hello. here. Uh, oh, Lorena, Lorena Kowaleski. And Lorena is also in geography. She's in geography and uh, social science. Department of social science. Right. Thank you very much. Very impressive. I'd, I'd just like to thank uh, FIA and the Deutsch Foundation, as well as the U.S. Department of Agriculture for their support of this project. Thank you. Oh, where is that? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm waiting. It's a, it's a terrific project, and I'm obviously is something that you hope can be scalable to other other places. How are you going to, you know, you're a senior, you're graduating, how is this going to continue? What is the process for continuing this and getting the data and putting the website up and do you need additional grants? I mean, what is your process? Well, Rachel Conrad is a um, Fulbright Scholar and she will be working uh, with the community through the end of the year. Our intention is to uh, provide an interim report to her, in fact, uh, in the next two, three weeks. Um, that will be disseminated to the community. Um, she will translate it into Spanish. Uh, that will become part of the website as well. Um, the website will be up in, in, in Spanish. Um, uh, in terms of sustainability, that's a very good question. Rachel is there through the end of October. We will do a final report and, and place a year's worth of data up on the web. What I'm really hoping is that we can make this um, a, a bit of a pilot or case study that we can demonstrate maybe to the U.S. State Department, maybe to some other government agencies that this is a way to really do things properly. I will be working on it after graduation. Um, since I am a survey person, I will be analyzing after graduation even helping her out. We're very invested in this project, so um, I'm going to do work after graduation. One of the things I'll talk about when the last, after the last team is what we're trying to do through the FIA to, um, you know, kind of enhance the trajectory of these projects out into the world, you know, and help think of sources of continuing funding. Thank you very much.